Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video I'm going to help you improve your volley in three simple steps. So the first thing, the grip. Which grip do we volley with? Now if you look at most pros, they are using the same grip for the forehand and the backhand volley and also the smash and that is the continental grip. So the easiest way to find the continental grip, put your racket out like this and imagine you were going to shake the racket's hand, so the grip's hand. So once you have the grip ready, the next step is now the ready position when you're waiting at the net. Now a very common thing that I see a lot of players doing, and this happens to players of juniors, adults, beginners, intermediates and advanced players, and even some professionals do it, they hold the racket down here like so. Now if the ball comes to my forehand from this position, it's very hard for me to go from here to here in time, especially if the ball's coming quite quick. So I want the racket to be in the ready position in the middle of the forehand or the backhand volley. So my racket head is in the middle. Now notice that my left hand, my non-hitting hand, is holding the throat of the racket like this. This will allow me the preparation. If it comes to my forehand, it's easy. If it comes to my backhand, I'm now using my, back, uh, my left hand to take the racket back on the backhand. Now notice that my racket head is not down either. It's quite high. It's much higher than the grip level of my racket. And the reason we do this is to create this L shape in the racket and the arm. Now this L shape will help me to have leverage over the ball. Now what exactly is leverage? Leverage is force over the ball. If I don't have that shape, if I have my wrist in more of an I shape, when I hit the volley, the only thing that I can do from here is now drop it and I'll lose all control and all power on their volley. Same on the backhand. If I hit a, a backhand volley from here, the only thing I can do now is drop the racket. So what I want to have is that L shape right in the racket and the arm right from the beginning of the stroke. So that's my ready position here as you can see from the front like this. Step number two, now the swing. Now the most common issue that players do on the volleys and this is on the forehand and the backhand volley, they swing too big. So the racket head goes back behind the line of their body. So if I'm going for a volley on the forehand side from here, a lot of players around the world, they'll do this. The first thing that they do is that. So they separate the arm from the body. So this racket goes way too far back. Now the reason we don't want to do this is when we come to the net, we have less time. We have actually half the time that we have on the baseline. And if you're playing someone who's aggressive, quite a hard uh, hitter of the ball, and you take a big swing, you're constantly going to be making contact on side of your body. And you're going to have no control on those volleys. So the first thing we want to do on the swing is make everything as compact as possible. Now, if it comes to my forehand from this position in the ready position, all I want to do is basically put my racket out to where I'm going to meet the ball. So if my contact point is going to be here, all I want to do, the first step, is I want to get that racket out here. Now if I have more time and the ball's coming a little bit higher, a little bit softer and I want to generate power, then I'm going to swing. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to see how the ball is traveling to me. If, if I see the ball is coming a little bit faster, I'm not going to swing. I'm going to just keep my racket out here and I'm going to use my body weight and my forward momentum on that volley. If I see the balls coming a little bit slower, from this position now, I can then swing a little bit more with my racket and my body. But the first step is always keeping that short backswing to begin with. If you watch the best doubles players in the world, these are some of the players with the best volleys because they always have to work on their volleys, because they're always crossing, they're always poaching, they're always intercepting. These players, if you watch the technique, from this position, the swing is very minimal when they are closing in on the net. And if you're playing a singles match, that first volley you hit might be around the service line. And even on that volley, you don't want to have too much of a swing because you want to control that first volley. You want to use the other player's uh, pace for that volley. 
So you're probably thinking, if I don't swing, I won't get power. Now the power on the volleys doesn't come from the swing. The power on the volleys comes from the forward momentum of the body weight going through the volley. But that's in step three. So the first thing on that volley, if it's a forehand, all I'm doing, I'm taking my racket back to the contact point, not any further. I'm seeing the flight of the ball. If I have a bit more time, I might swing a little bit more. But if I don't have more time, I'm just happy to keep my racket out here and then go forward as we'll do in step number three. If it comes to my backhand side, I'm using the left hand to hold the throat of the racket and almost imagine that on the backhand volley, you're almost gonna catch the ball with your left hand if you're a right-handed player. So if, if I imagine that, what's gonna happen is my left hand now prepares the racket on the backhand volley. So once again, I'm keeping that L shape in my racket and my arm. The left hand's now working, helping me take the racket back. And yet again, I'm not going behind my body. If I see the ball's coming a little bit slower, then I might take a little bit further backswing. If I see the ball's coming faster, I'm gonna keep the racket out in front and then go forward with my body weight. So once again, if it comes to my forehand, the L shape in my racket and arm, keeping the racket out in front of my body, seeing how fast the ball's coming. If it's coming quite quick, just taking that for the backswing. So almost imagining I'm catching the ball with my right hand. If it comes to the backhand, the use of the left hand is very important. Keeping that racket out in front, keeping the L shape in the racket and the arm. And if I see it's a little bit slower and I want to gen generate more power, then I'll take a little bit more swing. But for the most part, on most volleys, very minimal backswing using the forward momentum of the body for the power. And step number three to the perfect volley. You've done the ready position now, you, you see that it's coming either to your forehand or to your backhand. You've prepared the racket accordingly. And the last step is now using that forward momentum to go through the ball and generate the power. Some balls, you won't have time to go through. You'll have to just almost step into the ball slightly. So a little, uh, with my left leg on the forehand, I just do a little step. If it comes to my backhand with the right leg, a little step. If I have a bit more time and I can move forward, through the ball, I want to firstly start on the outside leg. So if it's coming to my forehand, that right leg will now go out, and I'll do that first step out, and then I'll go forward with the left. So once again, if I have a bit more time, or the ball's slightly wider, right leg, left leg. If it comes to my backhand, left leg, right leg. And that is creating that forward momentum that I want to have on the volleys, because if I'm not taking a swing, and I have to overcome the opponent's shot with the pace of the shot on the ball, if I want to overcome it, I either have to take a swing, which is gonna make me lose control, or I can overcome it with my own body weight. So I can almost cheat with the swing without taking the racket too far back, keeping the racket down in front, but using that momentum of going through the volley to create the power to overcome the other player's uh, power on the ball. So there you have it, three steps to the perfect volley. So let's go over them once again. Step number one, the continental grip for the volley. This is gonna allow you to hit the forehand volley, the backhand volley, high balls on both sides, low balls on both sides. Also allow you to hit half volley, so if the ball's bouncing and I don't have time to get it before it bounces, I'm still able to hit a half volley with the, the continental grip on both the forehand and backhand. I can also hit the smash with this grip, and if I get lobbed on the backhand side, I, I can also hit a backhand smash with this same grip. So it's a perfect grip to have at the net. The last thing you wanna be doing is hitting a forehand volley with one grip, and then having to change and hit a backhand volley with another grip. You just don't have time, and the, the better you get, the better players you play, you'll have less and less time. So if you are a beginner, or if you're just starting out on uh, learning the volleys, try to use the same grip for both the forehand and backhand because eventually you'll have to change and it's better to do it now than when you get better. 
So you've got the grip, then it's the ready position, racket head higher than the grip level, creating that L shape in the racket and the arm. Non-hitting hand holding the throat of the racket to allow for the preparation on both sides. Step number two, now you have the ready position, you see it's coming to the forehand or the backhand, then you take a very small backswing, so you're going just to the contact point. If you have a bit more time, you can take a bit more swing. If you have less time, you can just keep the racket out there. So almost just absorbing the pace from the opponent's ball. And step number three, using the forward momentum to uh, generate the power, but also close down the net. So the other reason we step through the volley is to close down the net. If I stay on the same spot and I just hit the volley from here, I'm never actually closing the net. I want to eventually get quite close to the net so that I can finish off with angles. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please give a, a thumbs up, a like. Uh, leave a comment down below. What would you like to see in the near future from me and Alex? Uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on the notifications so you get our videos when we uh, release them. And see you soon. All the best.